I feel like in a formal conversation, it's like not what we do. This is new for us. Um, on that note, I guess this is my first pod hosting. Congratulations. Thank you. I probably should introduce the podcast. Hi, this is Two for Chirping. Do you want to start? With, yeah, I, should we start now? I think that's what, I think that's the intro. Okay. <laughs> they know what we're, what we're doing. I think they've got it at this point. Yeah. Hi, welcome back. This is Two for Chirping with Rachel Wall Brown. Um, I was introduced last episode with Andrew Moss Brooks. And uh, this is Matt Shear, Cyclone's graphic designer. Hello, everyone. So, Matt, you've been here a lot longer than me. We've worked together for, what, three years now? Yeah. I feel if, like, you, if you count COVID year. I feel like you count it more. <laughs> yeah. I feel like COVID year is like two years in one. Yeah. I mean, I'm coming up on 10 years, and I feel weird including that year, but it was there. It counts. You did things. Yeah, I did some things. You did a lot more. Yeah. Because social media was all we had. Bingo boards were a lot <laughs> of the pandemic. Um, what the Cyclones didn't see was me um, dressing up as uh, Tiger King for our Zoom meetings. That I was, didn't get to see that. Um, I did try to theme our Zoom meetings, and I said, oh, Tiger King, Zoom. You know, we still kept up with those. And I was the only one that showed up. I had a mustache and everything. I drew that on with an eyebrow pencil. To be fair, we didn't think you were serious. Really, though? Yeah, well, we like, should have. Looking, back, looking been. back, you should have. Okay, back to you, though. Not about <laughs> me as Tiger King. <laughs> Is he still in jail? I haven't followed since that was a... Netflix hit. I and think, what a time that was. You know what? I think he is still in jail. And I remember he thought he was going to get pardoned or something. He had a limo waiting outside the jail and it never happened. I feel like even that was years ago. And I I'm sure he's there. Time is a construct. Social construct. It's true. Okay, so back to you and <laughs> your 10 years here. I'm glad I could lighten up the three that I've been here. Um, graphic design. You've always been a graphic designer. Uh, yeah, since I graduated. Before that, I was more of a retail associate Aren't we all? but yeah we all start somewhere and yeah I've been here 10 years doing graphic design amongst other things and it's been quite a ride so was graphic design always what you wanted to do or did you pivot at some point in college um so I started in IT um and what I found while I was majoring in IT was that I liked the website design portion okay. of things and I kind of just took that route into straight graphic design I didn't want to kind of hold myself into just web building, mm -hmm. but I still kind of do that on the side as well. So on the side, that's yeah. where I started. So growing up then, did you draw at all? Because isn't that a big part of it? Or is that different types of graphic design do different types of things? Um, different types of designers definitely draw more. Okay. Uh, I don't draw that often. When we get into the logos and the different jerseys, there's definitely some drawing. Cincinnati Hippos wearing the merch. I had to rep you today. I uh, almost <laughs> wore my shirt. I'm kind of glad I didn't. We're on the way you should have because is. Andrew before they hit the road today, and that is this is why I'm doing this today. Going back, um, Andrew is busy with playoffs, and we all know the playoff schedule is it like the most sporadic, crazy thing ever. You don't know when you're playing, so to give him more time to give the players more time to focus on hockey, um, I'm coming in the mix to focus more on the behind the scenes stuff that you don't see. So, like Matt, how long did this design take you? So the logo probably took me about a week, and that's not every single day, every single minute. But it's just, right. you know, when I had the time, I went back, and uh, I think you were in the room a lot of the time when I actually mm -hmm. was sharpening pencils and starting from scratch on those. And I don't get to do that with every project. It's really just the big ones that yeah. I get to go that route. But back to what you were asking about drawing, um, I did draw a lot in school. Um, honestly, I got yelled at a lot for it because I was drawing when I wasn't supposed to be drawing. Paid and and then in art, art class, ironically, I was also not paying attention in that class when I should be drawing. I was doing Were you doing things. math and art? And no, I was, so. I, I was probably just uh, singing or doing something annoying, Matt, which is why vocalist? I didn't get recommended for eighth grade art, and now joke's on her. <laughs> um, I'm doing it for a living. I mean, that's the way to do it, though, yeah. right? Um, and not to steal your thunder, fun fact about me and my art skills. <laughs> in, the, in kindergarten, I won... I was like nominated for something. I've got this puppy that I drew as a kindergartner and wow. crayon, and it was like a weaving content. Like you had to like weave things in. Um, it was in the Akron Art Museum. The Akron Art Museum. Correct. Like I went. Like I not even like the art show in your gym at school. No, it was at the wow. museum. I went. I have a photo of me standing there in my little dress, like whatever. It's still framed in my elementary school, like hanging in the principal's like that little section. 
and I got a hundred dollar bond. Well, that's the degree to my graphics. And it's design. it's really on brand since it was a dog. That's right up your. It head. really, yeah, truly. <laughs> but so I don't know if you could top that. I don't. It might be a little bit like in comparison. It's to a different book. skill set. I, I haven't tried to weave anything quite yet. Okay, maybe that should be your next a summer project. We'll see. That's up to you guys. Uh, maybe weaving will be. <gasps> we'll get into it. Crocheted jerseys. Seems like a lot of work, but um open to it. Okay, so <laughs> graphic design. So you drew a little bit in school when you weren't supposed to, took it into college, so then post-grad. Uh, so so I guess going back to the website stuff, I managed a bunch of websites in college. That was okay. actually my job. And I moved on from that job here because I interned at Madison Theater. And that was, so I was making websites, which is sort of design, but at Madison Theater, I was making concert posters and ads and a lot of stuff you see for shows here at Heritage Bank Center. Because music is a big thing. Like, So hockey you grew up playing, yep. which we'll get into in a second, but music is also a love. So this job for you is kind of the best of both worlds, or yeah. like three worlds, I guess. I actually quit playing hockey to play music more. Oh, and now, I know that. Yeah, uh, well, that didn't go very far. It was fun. Clearly. It was fun, <laughs> but it did not go very far. Um, that was high school. What did you, like, were you, you were the singer? Uh... That's a did loose play, term. Did you play guitar? Like, I, was, I was the guitar player, but uh, when we went through vocalist changes, I ended up there at some point, and it wasn't singing. Was it like screaming? It was a little angry. Yeah. Okay. That's what we were into in high school, though. That's fair. So, yeah, I just pursued that, and um, I guess they kind of both came together as like a creative pathway in hockey. Yeah. And there's a lot of music involved here, too, for those who don't know. Um, we have, I mean, obviously we have all the concerts here at the building, but mm -hmm. the Madison Theater is part of our um, portfolio. Our umbrella, yeah. yeah. So we do a lot of music stuff here behind the scenes. So you started out at Madison, and is that how you kind of transitioned to, I guess, the big arena? Yeah, that was just an internship, and when it was over, I kept hitting Frank. He's still there. I kept hitting up Frank, and I was like, any posters you need, anything you need for shows, local, national, if, you, if I can just get tickets, I'll do whatever. I'll just yeah. want to be around. He says, I'm going to hook you up. There's this group called Niederlander. I actually knew who they were because when I was interning there, I helped with a show there that Niederlander put on. It was fun. Mm -hmm. but we are, uh, some nights we are young. Um, it, was oh. huge, it was huge at that point. And they were playing Madison Theater, which was very small for them. Okay. So that was kind of my yeah, introduction. I was going to say, was that like the beginning of their like, career? Uh, that was, that, so that was their second album, but that was when they were huge. That was when that song was big. So the fact they were playing Madison Theater was cool, mm -hmm. and I was just an intern backstage. I was wearing my band tee, hanging out with Frank, um, and then all these people in yellow shirts, this army of people in yellow shirts, the security. It was a whole different setup than their other shows, and yeah. I was like, who are these guys? And this is Nederlander. They actually own the arena um, across the river, yeah. and that was my first introduction to Nederlander. Coming to the end of the internship, when I asked him about some graphic work, he said, they're looking for someone over in Nederlander at the arena, and um, I've since told our bosses this, but when I was in my interview, mm -hmm. sitting in the interview, not even like waiting for it, but at the table with our uh, GM, Kristen, mm -hmm. Sean, our marketing director, um, I found out in that moment that this was a Cyclones job. So you went into <laughs> <laughs> So wait a minute, you didn't even really apply slash go in for an interview with a hockey team. You went in for an entertainment gig. Yeah, so um, the whole conversation up till then was about Niederlander. Okay. And I knew I was doing my interview at the arena. So the only thing I had spoken about, and this was a matter of like probably one and a half days. It happened very quickly. Right, it's like been like one email. Yeah, so the resume was off and then like a, a, the next two days I was interviewing. Awesome. And so we'd only really talked briefly. I knew it was entertainment. I didn't actually know Nederlander owned the hockey team. If I knew that, I probably would have assumed that. And yeah. when I found that out, they were giving their little like, intro spiel to the interview. Well, it was relatively new, right, for Nederlander to be owning the Cyclones? Uh, relatively. It, it, was, it had been the case for a while when okay. I started, but um, it definitely hadn't always been the case, especially when I was a Cyclones fan as a kid. It was definitely not the case. Yeah. So um, that was just new information to me, but the good news is, as I just mentioned, I was a Cyclones fan as a kid, so I was able to turn on a dime and make that, inter I mean, I'm here 10 right. years later, so. 
and it worked out for you. Yeah. I was telling Andrew um, when we were recording our episode because he was asking stuff, and I was like, well, you just can't teach the wit side of things, and I think that's the entire marketing team, right? So, I mean, you had to flip on the dime, and I feel like a lot of people couldn't do that, but that's a lot of the work that you do is you will design something, and essentially, unless you're working for yourself, you're designing for other people. So you may think one way, but the person who has requested the art, in their mind it looks completely different, or there's certain changes, so you have to be ready to flip on a switch. Yeah, switch. that's probably the hardest part of the job is um, working so quickly with things that naturally take a lot of time to do. So yeah. you kind of have to eliminate a lot of decision making and just kind of go for it, just especially go. especially in sports. like. It depends on the project, but things happen quickly here, and social, you know that more than anyone. Actually, sure. most of the, nothing against you, but a lot of the fast turnovers I have are things for social. So. Sorry. <laughs> Three. And I mean, but that goes hand in hand with like why I'm even sitting here talking to you right now is because of quick turnover when it comes to hockey games. Mm -hmm. And it's not just Andrew and the team who are having to, they don't know if they're playing on Tuesday. Yep. Hopefully not. I'm hoping they win. We're currently recording uh, the day before Game Four uh, and sequentially Game Five. So hopefully they don't play on Tuesday, but they won't know that until ultimately Sunday night. Yeah. And so that means you don't know if certain graphics for you are even going to be needed until almost usually 24, 48 hours. Before. Yeah, and the strategy there is I make them anyway. Um, the graveyard. I did the same. So. <laughs> I had to, my career, and we'll get into this too, about how much people doing so many different types of jobs is like in the minor leagues, and I was the same way. The graphic graveyard of championship things that you make that will never see the light of day, it's almost like a Super Bowl, t-shirts and hats. Yep. Do you have a folder saved? Um, I have a few things. I do try to minimize it as much as possible, and I know that kind of comes off snappy in marketing meetings when I do that. <laughs> Um, but you know the nature of being the only dedicated designer for a pro sports yeah. team is that there's a lot of work, and you know I understand that, and um, I'm just doing, I'm just protecting my ability to do those things to the best of my ability by minimizing things that may not happen. So, do you think that people know that there's only one of you here? Um, I think if you're in like the, the field, I think fan. if you're well, in the, the minor, yeah, I, I don't think the basic fan probably realizes it. Not that y'all are basic. Um, the the average fan yeah um, probably doesn't realize it. Someone who's in minor league sports probably assumes it because mm -hmm. uh, it's not just the case with my job; it's the case with many people's jobs. And you know what? I wonder if anyone who's worked only worked with three letter league teams if they even know. You know, yeah, they know how spoiled they are to have people dedicated. Anyone, yeah. anyone that can help them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're not salty at all. No, I mean because at the end of the day, sometimes it's like. I enjoy wearing all the hats of like this, having the one person because I own everything so it's all mine so I get to take pride in it and I can do whatever I want and I don't have to worry about collabing with anyone and so I think it would be a transition to have to have even just one more person three more people like designing trying to figure all that out could probably be an issue too yeah it's a give and take I would say um, I like collabing with people okay but I also am, I know I know what I want it to look like. Yeah, that's so, the hard part. So what the goal for me is, so a lot of people think the goal is either I have to be happy or you have to be happy with it, and one of us has to compromise and give in mm -hmm. when that decision doesn't really have to be made. What I like to do is try to make everyone happy, and I know being a people pleaser, but that's hard. it is hard, but that solution is always there. Um, you know. I guess I can kind of talk about the hippos thing is I approached it from a hockey logo mm -hmm. and when I did that um, and this never saw the light of day but the hippo had angry eyebrows right because it's crushing through a stick it's a hockey player right he's we just, took the he's fight just, in hockey to the cute hippos at the zoo yeah and if you look through all the popular hockey logos all the way through the major and minor leagues most of the mascots are at least in the moment they're angry they're mm -hmm. aggressive, they're, they're just, that's just the persona of hockey. Mm -hmm. But you have to think about it from the fact that we partnered with the Cincinnati Zoo. We're blending and brains. Fiona is not angry. No. She's cute. She is cute. So 
I think it worked better as a hockey logo with angry eyebrows, but I recognize that it worked better as a community initiative without mm -hmm. angry eyebrows. Right. And although I liked the idea of the angry eyebrows more, I understood that the work was better for what it was intended for without them. No, that makes sense. So it's not necessarily what I wanted versus what the zoo wanted. It was something that we both agreed was the best work. So going back, so we were the Cincinnati Coneys last year. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be the three ways. We avoided jokes with that. It's fine. There's jokes with Coneys too. You just got to fire a little harder. <laughs> we won't say them on air. <coughs> um, but that one was an angry Coney. But yeah. I guess it doesn't, it's an inanimate object, so it didn't matter. And that skyline doesn't have a cutesy um, vibe to, I guess, that. Yeah, I mean, Skyline and the zoo, they're both really great on social. They've established their voice very well. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't say either of them could be described as angry. No. But Skyline was open to having fun with, first of all, a character that didn't exist already. Correct. Fiona, not a character, but... Fiona exists. Fiona, Fiona exists. has so a we, personality already. Yeah, we were playing off an all like we just cartooned an already existing entity. Like it's, it's, she is an entity at this yeah. point. I mean, she is Fiona. We had fans from literally across the entire country wanting this T-shirt. Does that sound cool? Like, is that cool for you? It is cool. That there are people in California or Seattle. Yeah, it's or cool. Wherever. I've actually I haven't traveled. Well, I have traveled far, but I haven't. I'm, I was up in Dayton for a concert and I saw Coney's stuff. Yeah. Um. I think I've seen some at the airport before, and you know who knows where that went. And well, back to the Coney's people. one. People have ripped off your jersey. Yeah, that people would, are selling. That would be China. They rip off. Of people are selling stuff. fake Coney's jerseys. We've seen them. We've seen them. In yeah, China. we see you wearing them, and the we reason know that we know fake. you're wearing them is because they don't look as good <laughs> at all. <laughs> but that has to be, I guess, cool for it's you. It's cool. Like, I've, I've never been bootlegged that I know of before. So oh, it is. Time. It is cool. Um, a I do need to the send resume. them a letter, or at least request a little bit of a cut of whatever they're charging <laughs> for those. But yeah, so we took a real, actual thing and turned it into the logo. But then the Coney's, you got to completely change or create that icon in that character. Yeah, that character yourself. I think the fact that it was completely new character and didn't exist anywhere else was why we had more freedom to. Did that one that take expression. you longer? That one did take me longer. Um, it's just a little more detailed, mm -hmm. and um, I think it goes back to the same thing we're talking about. Is you know, essentially, I, I drew a hippo. I know it looks like Fiona, but a lot of hippos look the same. I'm going to be honest. I learned that looking at a lot of hippos but people for know. this logo. But people know. <laughs> but people know, and it's the color, and it's the association association with the zoo. Um, those two things together, undeniable. It's yeah. Fiona. I know that you designed this, but I was the one that got to go. Fiona at the zoo, so that was pretty cool. That's all right. I think I was busy. I was invited. <laughs> you have to let me have this one. <laughs> okay. You, you had it. You Thank got you. it. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, okay. Would you say these types of projects are your favorite to do, or do you like the quick, fast pace of the designing for your everyday, like your game day, your rounds of playoffs, that kind of thing? Uh, it just takes two different ways of thinking. So I never considered myself a good illustrator, even though I've been drawing and illustrating and just doing it for fun mm -hmm. and creating logos, whether it's here or for, I, I freelance as well, so for other clients. But um, I really just, you know, the, the easy thing about starting with pencil and paper is you can move everything easily and you can mess up and you can screw up. and when you're in like that safe zone of creativity, you can really just come up with something. And when it comes to the stuff for social, I don't have the luxury of starting with laying something out and thinking about um, thumbnails and what it should look like. I start at like step four, and I'm I'm already in Photoshop when I'm making it. I don't I don't get that luxury. So I would say I enjoy getting to go back to those steps, but mm -hmm. um, I can't afford to spend that long on every project. It would. So, do you love me or hate me when I come to you and already say kind of what I want it to look like? Because I, at some point I'm taking away your freedom, like artistic freedom, but then like you just said, the other side is I let you bypass steps one, two, three, four, 
and I'm telling you kind of already what I want it to look like. Yeah, I appreciate creative direction. Um, I'll push back when I disagree with something, and that's not to say I get my way or you get your way, like I said. No, because I push back on your stuff, too. Yeah. I think it's a fair trade. Yeah, and, you know, uh, when you're dealing with creative work, sometimes you have to remember not to take it personally because, like, at the end of the day, it's something you made rather than, it's not just an email you sent. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, like, something that it's came pride. out of your mind. Um, but, no, I, I appreciate creative direction. A lot of times when I work with someone else's vision, I end up trying things that I wouldn't have tried before. And when they end up working, that's not only good for what we're creating, but it's mm -hmm. another skill in my tool set. Well, and you kind of, I mean, at the end of the day, really bring what I'm thinking to life and make it look better than what I had envisioned in my head even. So that's super Well, great. thank you. <laughs> no, Matt, thank you for really making this, I mean, because- I would say the hardest part about those fast turnovers on the social graphics, because for the most part, we have them templated. Like yeah. when there's a milestone, they don't look the same, but you can tell they're in like a series together. It's a vibe. So if every milestone was put together on a piece of paper, you know that they're all milestones. And that's the whole point. Yeah, they've got elements to them that are only for the milestone graphics. And they right. fit this vibe of the whole season. Like we went kind of dark this year with mm -hmm. our with our creative. And well, because last year was light. Yeah, and we like to switch it up. And you'll see that in the playoffs too. Like first rounds will look different than second round mm -hmm. because not only is that just more interesting, but when you're flying down the highway, oh, if it's 75, you're not going the speed limit. You're probably going like 40 because it's traffic. Yeah. Um, but when you're going down the highway, we want you to visually know that this is different than the billboard you drove past last week because we got a lot of games. Yeah, I and mean, the same way on socials, I want people to know that what they're looking at, that's why game days are all looking the same because when you see it, you know what it's standing for. It's same with, I guess, playoffs. Like once round one is over, we start pushing round two, we will make it, we're manifesting round two, and um, you'll know that this is a completely different set of games. Yep. That's the whole point. Because you're going either fast on a highway or you're scrolling fast on a phone mm -hmm. and you need to be able to tell the difference between something. Yeah, so we established that look. What I was going to say is the hardest part is going through the photos to find one, a photo where the player is not in an awkward position with right. their tongue hanging out. Mm -hmm. Happens a lot. None of them make good game faces. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I look to these photos, I'm like, can you do something different with your face? And, you know, just going through all those photos, and it's not only that finding that right photo, but there's sometimes there's a lot of good photos, and I save all of them, and I keep them, and I wait to use them, for instance, on these playoff posters right. or um, something down the line when we need that graphic. Well, because it's not just a good photo. It's a good photo in the right direction. So In the right direction, in the jersey I'm looking for. Like, you'll right. notice on the playoff posters, they're all in the, right, in the same jersey, which means they were either taken at the same game, which is... The, ideal. Yeah, the, the idea that they all pose well in the same game is rare. Right. And or they're taken from separate games. Mm -hmm. And when you start getting into separate games, you know better than anyone. Tony Bailey, our photographer, great guy, amazing photographer. He'll send us nine discs of photos every right. game. Which and is that takes great. time to go through. Yeah, <laughs> which is great in terms of us having a lot of the quantity to pick from. I'm never stressed about trying to find stuff for channels. Um, but yeah, trying to find the one, it's because you never can find the one specific photo that you need. The one time you need Justin Vive, he will not be in discs one through eight, but he'll be in the ninth one. Yep. So a uh, big shout out to social media interns. For, um, for tagging those For photos. tagging those photos. Those have been um, a great adjustment or fix of the season because that was me doing it last year. So it feel like it really happened you kind of started to also and that I think lasted one day because we, just, we, don't, have the time. we yeah. don't have the time for it so um social media intern sometimes got an intern and they got to tag the photos so yeah if that was taken out of the mix hunting down that photo uh, those quick turnarounds would come, become a lot easier and like you said the interns have made that a quicker process yeah Shout out Courtney and Eli. And they're not just the intern. Yeah, they have names. They, they do have names. <laughs> Courtney and Eli, good job. <laughs> we have none of them today. We're literally in this podcast room alone. Yeah, they're usually behind the scenes they here. They are but... usually. It's fine. We get it. They have lives outside of here. Full-time gigs. We're hockey, we're hockey always and HBC always. Yep. Okay, so with that, though, you've been here for 10 years. So there's a lot to cover. I've only been here for three. This is my third season, four season. I don't know how everyone, pandemic, you know, 
um, being in hockey. I didn't grow up watching hockey. My very first hockey game was the one I worked here. I have never been to a hockey game that I wasn't working. I love the sport now that I'm in it. Mm -hmm. But what has been, have you liked transitioning from fan to employee? Like, how has that been? Yeah, um, honestly, it's funny because when I was at Cyclones games as a kid, which were at the gardens, I know a lot of our fans love those days. Um, I didn't I was, grow up in Cincinnati, I so I don't with, know. I was there with you guys. I was one of those kids. You could actually run around where the boards are. There weren't seats at the very bottom. So I was, oh, okay. I was down there the whole time pounding on the glass. You know what would be funny? Like, I bet you someone has, fo like, you're in the background of someone's photo. I'm sure I am somewhere. I was, uh, I know we were season ticket holders for a few years, and then when I started playing for the amateur league that used the Cyclones logo, okay. I don't think they were allowed to. They did use it. But it kept us in the Cyclones mindset, like we were fans. Yeah, and now was, we have our own it. Junior Cyclones. Yeah, I mean. Um, that are allowed to use the logo. Yeah. It was just, yeah. <laughs> well, that, those, I don't know if we're even allowed to talk about the amateur league I played in, because I, I don't think they were allowed to do that. that. <laughs> we'll ask Chris and Sean. Um, but that kind of kept me in the fan base, and they would, you know, they had an annex ice rink where we played at all the time, so it really kind of kept you involved with the Cyclones. And that transitioned also into when the Ducks were there. I don't think we're allowed to talk about the Ducks either. <laughs> I don't really know anything about the Ducks except that one movie that has them, right? Uh, well, those are the Ducks. Those aren't our Ducks. But they um, are. The Ducks basically just started playing in the gardens when the Cyclones moved downtown here. Uh -huh. And they were in AHL. Okay, so this wasn't the gardens. Like, this building wasn't. The gardens. That no, was somewhere the, else. the gardens doesn't exist anymore. It was oh. leveled about two or three, year, three, four years ago. I guess I need to like read up on some of the yeah. history here. It's being made into a PPE factory. Oh, okay. That's what I heard last. When they knocked it down, I heard it was going to be a greeting card factory. Greeting Regar cards. Regardless, it's not. Oh, you could go back to work for the gardens and make greeting cards. Yeah, I guess I, I could write some rhymes. Because you're a rapper, aren't you? Oh, you meant design the cards. Oh, you meant like I could no. write them. Yeah, I meant like <laughs> you're a graphic designer. We're talking about your graphic design skills, not yeah. your bar skills. That doesn't sound like I don't feel inspired by that word. I'll just writing cards. Yeah, I'll just stick to buying them. You know what job I would love to have? Naming nail polishes or like lipsticks. I don't you ever like look? Okay. I, nope. <laughs> I don't know. I know. I understand. They probably have. Trendy, cool names, but I can't think of anything. Like oh, well, I was gonna say. So, like, uh, your wife, Alex. Like, do you ever like go through and see what her makeup is named, or did, has she ever showed you when you're out? Like, you know, next time you're at Target. I never thought about going through her makeup, but now that I'm thinking about it, like, I have like looked at some things at Sephora. And yeah. I understand they have. Like, next time you're at Target, just mosey on over to the nail polish, pick up a few, and be like, "Who names these?" I'll try to remember to do that. And that's what I want to do. I'll text you. That'll be good. And we're back. All right, after that commercial break. Yeah. This is, work, this is working in minor league sports. Yeah. I mean, you don't have a whole crew, a whole team, or whatever. And we just talked about wearing hats where you're the interviewer, I'm the guest, we're both the camera people. And audio <laughs> technicians, yeah. lighting directors. Yeah. We are doing it all. Luckily, though, I think I'm going to pass this out today on to uh, the social squad. Uh, you know. Interns are going to learn. However, they do enjoy working on podcasts. Eli um, actually just got a job, so yay. Good job, Eli. That's what he's um, here for. Yeah, that's what he is here for. <laughs> um, and he works a lot on podcasts, and Courtney does the same thing. So this is all learning for everybody involved here. Yeah, it's one of my favorite forms of content, honestly. And I don't even, I mean, if you're watching this, good for you, but I don't even watch them. I just straight up listen to them the old school way. Yeah, well, okay, so we had to set this up the way because... I don't think we've addressed, I don't think Andrew has anyway, the differences in what it looks like oh, yeah. with lights and stuff. And that's really just for me because how do you learn about podcasts? You either hear about the podcast on another podcast or you catch a clip on TikTok. And yep. then you're like, hey, I want to go listen to that podcast. So I need the visual. And we talked about this too when we were transitioning, trying to figure out how we were going to take this podcast, the route we were going to go. And the thing is, you're not just... So this talks about wearing many hats. You're a graphic designer, but on the side, you've run your own podcasts. You've hosted them and helped other people put them on, correct? Yep. So you are sitting here saying, like you just said, it's all about the audio. We just need the audio to 
whatever. And I think we butted heads quite a bit, maybe in that meeting. I don't know about butt heads. We, we, were, when I, when we were saying I, the same thing. Yeah. I understand why you need the video. I'm coming from my perspective of it's so resource heavy to get the video. Mm -hmm. Is the juice worth the squeeze, basically? And we analyze that people are watching it. Yeah. So we're going to keep shooting it. I just consume audio better, and part of that is because I'm a designer, and I can't. I don't need to use my eyes. Um, I can work and listen to podcasts. I can right. just listen to it. Yeah. Well, because the juice, if the juice is not worth the squeeze, like no one's going to hear it. So how do you get people? What's the point in putting in the squeeze for audio if no one's going to listen to it? So that's yep. a little bit. I think I got that metaphor correct. But. Um, yeah, but so we collab on a lot of things. It, it's not just like you handle graphic design, I handle social media, Andrew handles PR and broadcast, and you know Sean oversees it all. Like we all collab on everything yeah. for the most part. What do you say? Yeah. Yeah. So with that, I am going to ask you a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a hot minute since I've had a question of the day. And just kind of like break things up a little bit in between hockey and like live entertainment, that kind of stuff. My question of the day for you, it is incredibly stupid and doesn't have anything to do with anything we're talking about, but that's how I like to roll. That's great. How many chickens would it take to kill a lion? Uh, well, you definitely have to attack from behind. Right? Yeah, or like when they're sleeping. Have you ever had a cat? You can't like sneak up on one. A lion though, like a dead asleep lion? I don't know, they got- I've never had a cat. They got those instincts. I don't think you can sneak up on a lion. Those especially, chickens are relatively Especially light. if they're sleeping at night, like they can see, are they? They're not nocturnal. I don't know. They they're have not. night, I think they have night vision. Yeah, they can definitely see better at night. You're, you're at a disadvantage in almost every way, especially if you're a chicken. But I would say at least a hundred. That's it? I'm thinking way more than that. To kill a lion? Well, I mean, there's a lot of factors. I mean... Okay, this is what... Their, talon, what I, their talons are their main weapon, right? I mean, they can peck they're at like things, probably but like I think the talon's finger, right? probably the most dangerous one, right? Yeah. You think a chicken talon is the length of your finger? Is it? That looks like a long talon. That's like a condor. Like, knuckle to... My nails are long right now, I don't know. Maybe, maybe like... Maybe like it's and definitely it, more. I'll give you like a third of the thing. Okay, well, so I feel like it's definitely more than a hundred chickens. I mean, it just depends how it goes down. I mean, one good talon to the right vein. I mean, is this is this getting too not safe for work? <laughs> not sponsored, <laughs> but monetizable. We're past like I think you only have to keep things clean for the first like. Three minutes. For yeah, we'll just check the explicit box when we upload this one. That's the only requirement. Which um, we'll need help with. I discussed, like I said, uh, this is, you said it's your favorite medium to do, right? Or to consume anyway. Is it your favorite to also, I guess, be a part of? Um, I really enjoyed having a podcast. My subject matter was much different than ours at yeah. the moment. Um, and we did it in a dedicated music studio, which that environment made it more fun to kind of it actually felt like you were going somewhere to do it, not just kind of like doing it in your bedroom or over Zoom. Mm -hmm. So it was fun. Um, with the demand for our, our time here, mm -hmm. um, it got kind of taxing. It's really hard to start up a podcast and make money. Right. And not that that was my goal, but um, it's definitely, I wanted it to go somewhere. When you put so much time and energy into something. Yeah. So I just I just didn't have the time to take it to that step. And me and my co-host, he was in my wedding. We were like best friends. Um, we just kind of put it down after about eighty-five episodes, which I think was a good run. Yeah. And uh, we he he's, he's still doing some stuff that's related to it, and I'm here. No, I love <laughs> I love a podcast like this conversation. I fully enjoy. It. The thing is, I feel like we should probably record a lot of conversation, like our lunch conversations, those should probably be recorded and put out just for the world. It's an entertaining, I think working in sports is such a fun and different environment that people, a lot of people don't get to see. They don't see the behind the scenes, which is why we're doing these staff interviews, because 
I don't think a lot of people know what goes into designing a new logo, designing a game day, anything. They don't or, realize that, like especially on weekday games, we've been here since like 9 in the morning. Right. So that's not much just saying it's a long day for us, I'm just saying there's a lot we have to do before the puck drops. Right. Everything that you fans get to see has been usually scripted, drawn out like to the T, and all the time and energy goes into like our sales staff putting in, um, getting puck drops or groups for intermission, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and sometimes they don't have them, so then it, we are tasked with finding people in the crowd or the audience. But everything you see in terms of what goes on the board, smile cam, for instance, usually that turns into a lunchtime conversation. It's like, who is going to be the person we are trying to smile? Yeah, like? by the time I get to smile cam for the game, I'm going through what uh, what they call decision fatigue, and I've just you're over the it. ability to make decisions is not happening in my brain, so I just kind of ask yeah. for help. <laughs> and same with games and different things like that. Like, let's take it back to poop the potato on Thanksgiving. Was that Thanksgiving? That was no, no, no. Uh, St. Patrick's Day. That was St. Patrick's Day. Thanksgiving was... <laughs> Thanksgiving why, was the, why would you need was the to... inflatable turkey bowl? Well, no, a real turkey, but Jay was in an inflatable turkey. Yes. <laughs> and, well, he was in the inflatable turkey, which the best purchase I've ever requested um, for the marketing department. I've had a blast putting the weirdest things on that sheet for Amazon. Um, but no, that was shots of gravy. Oh, yeah. Shot, I think, our best promotion. We did the turkeys too, didn't we? It was like, yeah, it was a shot, relay. They the had to, like, gravy they had to spin around, which Dizzy Stick is also a phenomenal addition to games. Dizzy Stick, I, I'm just like toting myself here. Uh, Dizzy Stick into the shot of gravy running to get the turkey and then bowling it into the net. Yeah, nothing that's really hard to do, but when you put them all in a row, it's fun to watch them do it. And <laughs> when it's on ice and $2 beer night. Yeah. It makes it entertaining for everyone. I mean, the, gra the gravy was questionable. No, that, that was we, the best part of it. We didn't heat it up for them, which if you, have, if you have gravy experience, you know that's what makes it a gravy consistency. No, nope, it was thick. It was thick, and being down at ice level just got a little thicker. It was not great. I don't know, <laughs> do you think sometimes that we add things in because it's entertaining for us, we just hope other people think it's entertaining? Yeah, we definitely do that. Um, if you've been at any like, uh, playoff games at home, you notice we've been blindfolding someone and making them find a cup on the ice. Good for them, they both found cash each time. Right, it got wildly less interesting but, in just two uh, days. There's literally no reason we're blindfolding them or making them dizzy. I think that's purely for us. It, yeah, <laughs> it's been a long season, we gotta get going. And we've got, we've got like six <laughs> minutes to fill, and if we just right. tell them to go pick a cup, that's gonna be over too quick, so we gotta, we gotta do something else. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same reason why I started it a few weeks ago when um, we were getting completely blown out like during the game, it was like eleven nothing, and at some you have to create your own fun at that point. Yep. Socials had nothing to do with the game at that time. I mean, I was tweeting videos that it was just like stupid, mm. and um, I was just writing down things for Andrew to say on the podcast. No one, well, now they do. No one knows that he was told to say certain things or how to fit something into the broadcast, but I got. The most fun out of it. Yeah, if he ever makes a statement that seems just a little odd, odd, he was probably challenged to work that. When out. he says the <laughs> word hashtag, I think you can safely assume it's me. Yeah, he doesn't talk like that. No, but like, so people don't know how he does not talk like that. So people don't know the background of putting on a hockey game. Hopefully, we'd like disclose quite a bit of it. But like, we also work on the entertainment side of things. So what all goes into announcing a show, putting it on, and like we're here for some of the shows too and what we have to do in terms of like getting that from the announcement to, you know, people are here inside the building. Yep. So that was also, but you came in here thinking you were going to strictly work for the entertainment side. Yeah, and what I found out is that's the side that needs the least graphic design. Because they give you everything. All these tours have their own graphic designers, mm -hmm. or they're coming from labels where they have designers, or uh, we have to resize some things. Sometimes we tweak it and use it for what we need, but mm -hmm. a lot of them come fully ready to go with their graphic package. Yeah, I would say a lot of that on at least just my side of things, it's really just maintaining and answering questions for the general public because even 
I'll come up with captions, but we have a pretty generic thing that we say anyway. But a lot of tours will even give you the copy that they want you to mm -hmm. put out. So for us, it really comes down to we escort photographers, which is pretty cool because we get to see the show from a vantage point that not many people get to Yeah, see. it's one of the coolest parts of the entertainment side of it is, you know, being not even front row, but in front of the front row for these gigantic arena acts. And uh, part of our policy is uh, we can't take pictures like you do because you're doing it for social. Right. But I can't get my phone out and take a picture, not only out of respect for the artist and my position yeah. of not abusing that, but... Um, like you've been wavered. Yeah, you have to be... It's just unprofessional. I don't have a photo pass. Um, mm -hmm. It's just what it is. So it's kind of... It's kind of unfortunate that I can't share those moments, but it's also cool that like I have all those moments and those are only for me. That is fun. Well, and it's that thing too, when you go to a concert, you almost feel like you need to take photos. I just was at uh, Taylor Swift, not to bring that up again. Uh, no, we haven't heard anything about that. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. For... <laughs> but I was there and I had such a hard time between wanting to live in the moment in capturing it. And I feel like that's a problem, I think, for just this generation as a whole. Uh, thank God my husband was with me and could just like capture stuff for me so I could <laughs> fully be yeah. in the moment. Perks um, of taking a non Swifty with you to a Swifty event. Um, so when you're at a concert, you take your phone out. Uh, when I'm attending a concert? Right. Um, like you're a patron, you're a fan. I'll probably snap. A photo at the beginning, because usually that's when it's the most cinematic anyway. That or towards the end. Okay. When they pull out all the stops, they draw you in. So I'll get a couple snaps. Um, if a song in particular I like comes on, very rarely will I take a video. Sometimes I will. But here's the thing. It's like taking videos of fireworks. Like, when do you watch that again? I hate fireworks. Like, I'll put a short one in my story. Like, hey, I was at this concert. This Look, look where my seats were. Usually I get pretty good seats. Yeah. So it's like... Just sharing that, but no, I don't. No one rewatches that video. And I also hate watching through a sea of phones. Like mm. if you're on the floor, I don't have that much of a problem because I can see over most people with my right. height. But I can imagine there's a lot of people who are watching the show through a phone in front of them. I mean, hot take. I really think it's a waste of money to be on the floor if you're not at least in the first five rows. Yeah. At least, I mean, and I might even take it down to the first three rows because. You don't see anything. And it's intense up there. Oh, well, because you, depends, go, depends, you go to, like, mosh pit Yeah, events. I guess, I guess. I would think our concert types are very different. That's true. I just told you I went to Taylor Swift concert, <laughs> literally in Tampa. There is no mosh pit Yeah. Anymore. It gets intense. I've been in some situations up there in the first yeah. fibers. <laughs> so, the entertainment side of things. Were you... I mean, you've been here for 10 years. Obviously, you've been happy working with the Cyclones and doing all that stuff. Were you, like, a little bit disappointed that you didn't get to make more tour posters? Um, I, I don't know if I was disappointed. I guess I, I, guess I just misunderstood. Or I, I mean, I, didn't under, I hadn't worked in this field yet. Right. I, I worked in the club scene where everyone needs a poster. Like, yeah. It's just a smaller Justin Bieber doesn't need you to make his poster no. for him. No, but those local shows, like, they do. they're happy to have a poster because usually it's just the band. And they're just like, we're coming. Yeah. So, I don't know if I was disappointed. Um, and I do kind of scratch that itch on the side. Um, That's nice. With, you know, other projects. So, I wouldn't say disappointed. Would you ever want to, Andrew and I talk about this sometimes, because... Um, you know, as a broadcaster, your goal is to always, like, move up and stuff. And I am very vocal. Like, minor league anything is my place. Minor league baseball, which I came from, I love way more than the MLB. Just that environment just suits me so much better, um, which ultimately helped me get the job here in minor league hockey. I love the minor leagues. So do you like the minor leagues? Would you ever have a desire to move into, like, a three-letter league role? Or how do you... Because that goes back into collabing a lot more with people. Yeah. Um, I tossed around the idea of going to the NHL. Um, I even actually applied to a couple jobs. Not even really to get them, but just to, like, see. see. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even say they were necessarily jobs that I wanted. Um, I just wanted to see. And um, I think through that process, I figured out that I don't really even consider myself in the sports industry. 
I consider myself in the entertainment industry for sure, which sports is certainly a part of, but I consider myself in like the creative design industry. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to sports, hockey is really the only one I can speak intelligently to. Yeah. Um, I played sports in school, but you know, besides hockey, I never really followed any player, professional players. I never really, you know, Growing up a Bengals fan is different than being one now, so yeah. I guess people understood that I wasn't one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but and even even today, like I'm not like obsessed with a certain player. I'm not obsessed with a certain team. I just enjoy the game of hockey, and I understand the game of hockey because I played it. And that's just what I don't have with basketball or football. I never played it. I understand the games. I can watch it and understand what's going on. I just I don't feel I, like, just I don't feel invested fun. in the team. I just think that's the fun, though, of working in the minor leagues is that you get to be more on the creative and entertainment side. It's not so stat heavy and like on the sport itself. And there's a time and place for it, right? We get super hockey, more, I don't want to say super, but definitely more hockey centric in the postseason. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, hashtag quest for the cup. Um, we're pretty hockey focused right now. Um, which yeah. is great for you and it's your It's understandable knowledge. in the playoffs. We, Correct. we definitely flip the switch a little bit. Yeah, little bit um, I don't get to have the players eat random things um, for me on camera. Uh, so that's fun. I'm cool with the high, the fights, highlights mm -hmm. that I get to cut. But So do you do you think we're going around two? I think we're going around two. I think the season was too strong to not go around two. Um, you Speaking know, of all those milestone graphics you had to make, we had a pretty good season. Yeah, like regular season. we had a lot of milestone graphics, a lot of them, you know, there were a lot that weren't even individual players, but team records this yeah. year, which were cool. Um, Vive hit several milestones. Mm -hmm. He hit total pro games, games as a cyclone, and... He had like gold, right? Or points? Points, yeah. Yeah. All-time points as a cyclone. It was a, it was a big Or all-time franchise points. That was a hot issue too. Okay, so, but this season was different for you during games because this was your first season in a while where fun also, we, talked we, about we have yet. talked about all the hats that we're wearing and we haven't talked about DJ Matt. Yeah, DJ Showflow. DJ Showflow, that was your legit DJ name, wasn't it? Uh, no, that's the name of the scripting software we use and it just oh. happened like that. Got it. Shout out Showflow. Uh, They're not a sponsor. We, not we sponsor. pay full price for that one. <laughs> Please sponsor us. Um, please. please sponsor us. Yeah. Send Andrew Mossbrooks an email. It's quite a quite an invoice over here, but we love your product. Uh, yeah. So DJ Slowflow over here. Did you enjoy doing it? Like you're up there directing it, essentially. Yeah. Um, did you do the game scripts? We haven't talked about any of this. Yeah, we should probably flip over to that because there's a lot to unpack there. We're gonna have to chop this episode up. Sorry, uh, Eli and Courtney, because we've been talking for a hot minute. But that's the thing. Like. First of all, you're super interesting to talk to because you've been here for 10 years, so you have a lot of knowledge of just the industry and your career in itself. But yeah, we wear a lot of hats. So you, DJ Showflow, um, prepping for the game day though, you are running around trying to get everything scheduled for the actual production of the game. Yep, so we have an agenda that we go through every game and that outlines everything from who Down to the minute. <clears throat> yeah, down to the minute. Uh, everything from who we're playing to who's taking a picture on the ice after the game, everything you see in between, a lot of stuff you don't see in between. Oh, I'm sorry, am I interrupting? Is that uh, no, on? it wasn't you interrupting. <laughs> um, and uh, we, we have to schedule everything out, and this isn't only for us, this is for you know the, the officials, the visiting team, they have to know everything that's going on, uh, our team, obviously. Um, it's pretty much the same for them every game, but we put it up anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot that goes into it. All the groups that are here tonight that get to enjoy um, experiences during the game. Where they're meeting. And, uh, you know, it's just... Sponsors, sort of like if they... Sponsored would, elements. Yeah, all the TV timeouts that are sponsored, any ad reads in the, that JV reads during the game, anything like J. Cruz has to do throughout the game, it's all coming from you. Yeah, and we got to make sure every game's a little bit different. Like, you know, for instance, the Pucks and Pups games will have some some one-off sponsors that aren't there for the rest of the games, mm -hmm. but, like, they'll be, uh, like, a rescue organization. They'll be in for the game, and we'll have to talk about them, place them on the concourse, 
Um, it's just a matter of getting all that stuff together. So we're talking to the corporate salespeople, we're talking to the ticket salespeople, we're talking to ourselves as a marketing department, we're talking to Teaming the team. Teaming everything. Yep, we're talking to the team, making sure they know what's going on, if there's anything that affects them. The guys in the AV booth, the guys down in the PA booth, the officials, everyone has to know what's going on. And well, because talking about Vive and all his big milestones, some of them require, you know, and we're happy to do it, but some of them are, we need to recognize him for this achievement on the ice. So if it's Justin, who has just taken uh, the ceremony of puck drop, be like, hey, by the way, there's going to be a camera and lights on you, so just like skate here. And our photographer and videographer on the ice need to know that so they right. can take the shot. Um, as well as our lighting guy. Um, all of our ops crew needs to know, the refs need to know what's happening because they're out there ready to drop the puck. Mm -hmm. Something as small as that has to go around to everybody. Well, because one wrong thing and we can kind of like set off a domino reaction of things. Yeah, it's not too bad in the regular season, but they're very strict about the start time in the playoffs, so right. we have to like actually follow to the minute what we're doing. Is that stressful? Like, is it, and that's something you took on just a handful of years ago. Uh, I lost track of what it was. So I took it over um, several sales directors ago because the sales director used to be in charge of all this stuff. Okay. And um, the reality of it was the marketing department was just more involved in the actual execution of everything. Mm -hmm. So it came our way. I actually asked for it. It made more sense. Yeah, it just made more sense. I was already doing a lot of it. It was just a matter of getting rid of the separation of who's doing what and just bringing it all into the same mm -hmm. place. Um, so then you're up there directing it as DJ Showflow. Yeah, so I was up, I'm up in the booth, which um, if you're at the games, it's right above uh, 218. Those windows that you see up there, that's where... To the right of Puck Shop. Yep, to the right of the big inflatable Puck Shop. That's where all Which we also used to put up, but we like to shout out the new promo crew because we don't have to do that anymore. Promo crew's been great this year. They have. They were... I mean, look at all these things that we say that we no longer have to do because we got these people here. Yeah, to help so, out. somehow we still have a ton to do. Correct, <laughs> but you know, it's really fun to see it grow. Yeah. Right, because that's the whole point, right? You should, your product should be good enough to where you're like, we need more hands helping. Yeah. So, um, as much as I loved putting up the big mascots with you every game, I'm happy that they. Well, not only that, like let's talk about this. Um, that position of the promo crew used to be filled by our marketing and sales interns. Right, yeah. And social media interns. Actually, it was pretty much all done by your social media interns, let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> um, and when I texted them this year and told them that no longer they had to do it, they were um, very upset. But I was like, you really, you know. And here's the thing, like, they were great at it, but they didn't. But then they couldn't do Social media. And they didn't come here to do that. Correct. They came here to do social media. And the promo crew has come here strictly for that. We um, got a great group of people who love interacting with our fans. You know, they create the energy. Because at the time that gates open, we've already been here for eight hours, ten hours, whatever it may be. And we're like, but they come in and they are energized. They are ready. They're yelling down the hall for a hype tunnel. It's great. Yeah, they're into it. And that's, that's the big difference is... You know, your interns were here to do social media, and you know, shout out Aaron and Jacob, but none of them, neither of them, were going to go down the hype tunnel screaming at fans to get hyped. No, it's not their personality. <laughs> no, that is the promo crew's personality. Right, and they're they're making our game experience better for it. Shout out promo crew. Shout out promo crew, and shout out you because you have the personality one to get things done in terms of like the game script. Back to that, and then also making sure that everyone knows what's going on. You've been here so long that. And we really have a core group of the front office. The, I mean, 10 years is a pretty standard time, I would say, for our group I'd to say, be back I'd here. I'd say it's middle of the road period. Like, there's a lot of people that have been here yeah. for a minute. So, um, you know everyone. You're able to direct people. Um, Kenny, up top, he's kind of like, I guess, your second or, like, right-hand man in terms of, he's, like, getting that. Especially right now. I mean, they like to say I run the show, I ran the show up there, but Kenny's really got his hands full, too. He's doing a lot up there. He's running the video boards. He's got a switcher next to him running the cameras, but he's calling a lot of the shots between them. You know, we've got people running sound and lights up there, but, you know, Kenny's calling a lot of shots. And technically, on Showflow, channel Showflow, uh, he is the shot caller. Yeah, I mean, it's a full-on production, which is why I think you even said we work in entertainment. 
instead of sports. But I think people forget that a live sporting event is a show. No matter what level you go to, there is a script to follow. There are one, two, four, however many people you want to have on running each thing. So it's a, it's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. We haven't talked much about Jay Cruz, but he's a huge part of our show. Mm -hmm. um, he's been here, I think he's only been here one or two more years than me. It might have even been the same year um, that we started here. And both of us know the game inside and out. He doesn't need a script. I don't need a script. If he got sick and this has happened, and I had to do the show for him, uh, it's that easy. You're the, just you're the next in. one who knows it the best yeah. at that point. But Unfortunately. So, so the execution, <laughs> right, where all these things we're saying, all these people are pushing these buttons and doing their job, but it all starts in the off season, and I think people forget. Sometimes I get asked, I don't know if you have been ever asked this question, they're like, what do you do in the off season? Like, what do you do when there's not a baseball game? What do you do when there's not a hockey game? I go, I... Everything. I... <laughs> Still have I still work there because the season doesn't happen unless you have June, July, August, September. Those are our big prep months. Yeah, that's when we put together the promo schedule. Last year, uh, we started designing our jerseys for this year in like June. Which we is... had one announced in June. Sorry, that yeah. was my that's my idea. If we're gonna do that again. I'll, I'll warn you now. Um, June will need another jersey. Yep, yeah, and if you are astute with your calendar, you'll probably be able to guess which one that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, prep work, but that's where you go into avoiding, or hopefully try to avoid a lot of last minute changes because we get a lot of templates made. Yeah, and honestly, we just do more work every year. We're not, we're not, we're doing a lot of the same types of things every year, but we're always doing more of it. So right. it's whether our digital strategy changes, or a new platform emerges. Yeah, there's always something new we're doing, so the more we can get ahead of it, the better we are. Yeah. The goal is to get better every season. So I'm excited for what we create in this off season after a very long uh postseason run. So we do need a little bit of a break, let's be real. Like at the end of playoffs July. at the end of playoffs it literally feels like we've been like dragged around for a little Well bit. at that point too it's like already <laughs> ninety degrees outside. I'm like, I wanna see a pool. Yeah. It's fine. Um but yeah, I'm excited to see what we create after a week at the pool or the beach. Um well I'm flying off to Italy literally in five days. You're off on a little bit of a cruise, right? It's a cruise. It's a, yeah, it's a it's an actual cruise, but yeah. Okay, so we get a little bit of a break before we swing back into the end of playoffs. 